So the last few years, the last few two decades or so, show an interest in religious and moral beliefs. So let's, let's focus on religious beliefs um, in science. So scientists nowadays try to explain why people hold religious beliefs. And um, they often do so in terms of our evolutionary history. Um, so to give you one example, um, which is quite popular, um, is the, the idea of a hyperactive agency detection device. So I'm going to say that again. <laughs> so hyperactive agency detection device. So the idea is um, that people have an agency detection device. So, so they can detect when there is a person or an animal in a room or in the neighborhood, right? Because people and animals, they interact with humans, whereas stones, for instance, don't, right? So they detect agency. Well, so far so good, right? Um, but now the idea is that uh, you, the ability of humans to detect agency is hyperactive. And it is hyperactive because you, your chances of surviving are higher if it's hyperactive. So if you're sitting at a campfire with a friend of yours and you hear something in the bushes behind you, you might think, oh, well, that's probably just the wind, right? Which, which is likely. But then it might also be a tiger or a lion, right, um, in the bushes. So it's actually safer to be, to be sure and, and, and to check, right? So you, you detect agency even if it's not around. Your, your chances of surviving are higher. So the idea is, because people have this abil ability uh, and it's hyperactive, people start to see agency even if it's not there. And they project this onto reality as a whole as well. So they, they start to think, look, this, this, this whole world must have been made or created by someone, God, um, which is why people believe in God. That's, that's a very rough story. All right, so there are these scientific evolutionary debunking explanations of belief in God. Um, so I think they are interesting and they're worthwhile, um, but in order to truly debunk belief in God, for instance, I think much more work uh, needs to be done. Um, so in order to be debunking, for instance, um, it should be the case that, um, that um, other explanations are superfluous. So for instance, it should be the case that God cannot use a mechanism like this. Because if God can use a mechanism like this, well, then it doesn't show that God doesn't exist, right? But then we get into philosophy, right? And we get the question, why couldn't God use a mechanism like that? So in order to be debunking, we need to get philosophy involved. So it's not, no longer merely just, just science. Um, and, and there are more problems with these explanations. So good scientific explanations, for instance, have, or most of them should have some predictive power. So they should uh, make predictions so that we can check whether it's correct. But most of these evolutionary debunking explanations, they don't make any specific predictions. So we can't really test them. And it's hard to distinguish them from just so stories. So this might be a just so story. So maybe, maybe they're going to be debunking. Um, but as things stand, uh, that's not the case, as far as I can see. 